So just got to the office tonight here, uh, got something with me that I'm pretty excited about. Uh, I'm gonna make a future video on it, but uh, came here tonight to kind of just set it up and I figured why not share some of this with all of you guys. So, a little gigantic and awkward, but this is my latest pickup. And if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen my post about it, but uh, yeah. Super cool scan 9000, uh, brand new in the box, unopened other than uh, me just opening the box to look at it. And uh, really, really excited about this find. Wanted one of these scanners for quite a while now um, and managed to come across this one on a local classifieds. Uh, the fella who was selling it, his father actually bought it new in Hong Kong. Um, Jeez, at least 10 years ago, brought it all the way back with him and never ended up using it. So uh, the scanner itself is still in the packaging and everything. So uh, yeah, really excited to hook this thing up. Um, but I figured I should probably film the process of me uh, kind of unpacking it because uh, I feel like this is kind of a rare sight to find one of these brand new uh, like this nowadays. So let's dig into it and See what's in here. I'm gonna put it back down here and pick pieces out. So, got kind of the accessory bit here. Firewire cable. Uh, came with obviously all the film holders that it would have. Unfortunately, no glass holder, but uh, 35, obviously 120. And then this looks like a tray for slides. And then some, uh, you know, it's old school when you get uh, your software on CDs. So obviously won't be needing those. This looks like some sort of uh, card PCI board. Don't need that. Actually, funny enough, came with a UK plug. So I'm back in Canada now, so I got a uh, US plug for it. But uh, this will come in super handy. Instruction manual. And a bunch of, oh, here's like a quick start preparation guide. And then, yeah, a bunch of uh, just random other pieces. Gonna have to take my time tomorrow when I come back just to go through everything and make sure I'm not missing anything. So keep out this quick start guide, keep out the user's manual. Obviously gonna not need this PCI board. Not gonna need the CDs and not gonna need that plug for now. Nor am I going to need the slide tray, so we'll keep out the others. Okay. So I did have the guy bought it off since I actually found this when I was in the UK still. Gave the guy a deposit, so he opened up the back of the package to plug it into the wall. <clears throat> just to make sure everything worked, so. Pretty, uh, pretty neat though to see one like this. So if you aren't familiar with the CoolScan 9000, which I'm sure most of you probably are, uh, this thing's kind of legendary. Obviously the film scanner market nowadays is just, uh, has not caught up with the current popularity and demand. So, you know, people are using Epson flatbeds. It's what I've been using for a few years. Um, never been super happy with it. They are, I mean, depending on, all comes down to what you want to do with your images. They are capable in, in some ways, but, um, you know, in terms of 120 scanners, uh, you gotta find older models basically if you want something that'll do 35 and 120 or just 120. And the CoolScan 9000 was kind of considered the best option uh, before getting into um, uh, Imicons and Flex tights and stuff like that, which are obviously way more money. So uh, there was the CoolScan 8000, which is really good as well. And then the 9000 was the last model ever made. And uh, yeah, this, these are becoming even more kind of highly sought after nowadays just because no companies are making 120 capable 120 film scanners, at least to this level. This thing is obviously just mint, which is super exciting. It's actually not that heavy either. The funny thing is, is like I said, I'm back in Canada right now. So when I go back to, uh, to England fly back, this is going to be my carry on. I'm going to put it in a, in a bag, big camera bag I have because I do not want to check this thing. I mean, it's actually pretty massive. It's not as heavy as I thought it was going to be, but uh, yeah, pretty huge. Really cool though, can't wait to use this. And then obviously in terms of connection, uh, I don't know if you guys can see that, 
it's firewire only so i have a new macbook pro which is thunderbolt 3 so i have like a firewire 400 to 800 cable that i bought and then i have a uh, apple firewire 800 to thunderbolt 2 connector and then i have an apple thunderbolt 2 to uh, thunderbolt 3 connector but uh yeah pretty excited about this one and then unfortunately no glass holder that was an optional accessory they're going for crazy crazy amounts now so you know i've heard people complain about these stock nikon um holders and just say that they aren't that good but i actually found a pretty cool article online with someone just kind of giving a rundown of some things uh, some kind of necessities to do when you're loading your film into this. So yeah, gonna be a learning curve for sure. Uh, what I'm gonna do, I come back tomorrow, I'm gonna hook this up and do some initial scans. I'll show you guys that part, uh, but it's gonna be obviously some time before I, I do a video about this. Um, hopefully in the near future, I wanna do something comparing it uh, with scans on my Epson uh, V4990. Uh, but obviously it's gonna take me some time getting used to this thing, learning it, figuring out best workflows and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, really, really excited. You know, for so long now, just shooting 120 and six by seven, um, using a flatbed, like I said, you can get, especially with six by seven, you can get pretty good results, but uh, I've just always, you know, wanted to try and get the most out of the film uh, that I could at home without, you know, sending it out to get drum scanned or something. And this is the way to do it. So anyways, going to hook this up, come back tomorrow and I'll catch up with you guys then. We'll get it hooked up to the computer and we'll do some test scans and See how it is. Okay, so got some film loaded up, some 645. I actually did go ahead and do a few test frames with this scanner yesterday just because I was really kind of anxious and excited to see what it was like. And I got to say, uh, first impressions, super impressed. Uh, it's actually made scanning enjoyable for me, which it's never really been. Um, I've always liked the control that scanning at home gives me, but I've just, like I said before, just always not been super impressed with the results from a flatbed. So uh, yeah, the, the results from this uh, were really, really impressive to me and just really straightforward uh, process. So, uh, so anyways, we're gonna jump into it. Uh, not gonna get too in depth today, just gonna do a few scans. I'm actually gonna try some 35 because I'm really curious about that. Um, and we'll see how it goes. So this is six by 4.5. I think this is Pro 400H. Um, yeah, we'll see how it looks. And I'm gonna use ViewScan. Uh, like I said, obviously you can't run Nikon Scan on newer OS because it was made back in probably 2004. Uh, so I'm gonna use ViewScan and then I'm actually going to scan as a raw DNG. Uh, just, I'm gonna scan the negative and then I'm gonna convert it in Lightroom using Negative Lab Pro, uh, which I actually just recently start, started using as well and uh, has really impressed me um, as well. So let's jump into ViewScan here. Okay, so I'm not gonna go really in depth with these settings, uh, but just quickly, I'm gonna leave this at 48-bit RGB. I'm not gonna go to 64 because I'm not gonna do any uh, dust removal or, or uh, infrared cleaning on this. Um, change this back to zero. Uh, so 4,000 DPI, that is the native resolution of this scanner. It will do actual 4,000 DPI, which is amazing. Uh, so I'm gonna leave that. Uh, and then we are going to uh, leave fine mode on, which uh, takes a little bit longer, but apparently will avoid some banding issues that these scanners can have when you use them with ViewScan. Uh, so we're gonna leave that checked. Uh, everything else we're gonna leave the same. Uh, we aren't worried about any infrared cleaning. We're gonna leave that off, same with grain reduction. Color doesn't matter because we're just scanning the negative. And then for output, we are going to uh, have raw file checked raw DNG format because we're going to convert this. Okay, so yeah, I guess we should probably preview it first. So we'll just wait. Okay, so that's all done. And uh, the other thing that I didn't mention is uh, these cool scans have autofocus. Um, obviously, if your negative is perfectly flat, it's not really going to matter where you put that point. This one here, this little kind of flashing dot is your uh, autofocus points. I'm just gonna put that on the front of the car here. I think the trick though with these scanners is really just uh, learning how to load the film properly or getting one of the glass uh, negative holders. Um, so I think it's gonna take me some time just to make sure I always have the negative as flat as possible because um, you know if it's warped or skewed a little bit, I think that's when you're gonna start to see some, uh, some sharpness loss in the corners and things like that. So again, just a learning process. Uh, 
Let's go ahead and we're going to select. Uh, we're going to leave some of our border selected just because we are using Negative Lab Pro. We're going to need a bit of that. Uh, crop that down. Looks pretty good. And let's go ahead and scan this one. And we'll wait. So we're going to use Negative Lab Pro. Um, probably actually going to do a video on this as well. I, I dabbled with it a little bit in the past. But like I said, I used it yesterday when I was just messing around with these files and uh, I did a bit of a compare between the results that ViewScan gave me in terms of color um, versus a Negative Lab Pro and I was really, really impressed and super happy with it. So I ended up buying it pretty much right away. Um, so let's go ahead. Uh, what we're going to do, we're going to go to develop, choose our profile here first. Um, and now we're going to crop, get rid of that border. So we're going to go four by three because this is six, four, five. Something like that. And go um, let's see. Yeah, let's just leave it all as leave it all as is and see what this does. Not bad at all. Um, I usually go and set this to all soft, so it's not as harsh, but that looks really good. Those are some really nice colors without me doing anything. Um, sharpening, let's see what happens. We'll go lab sharpen, but in terms of color and tonality, going to leave that. Again, not going to go too much into this or spend too much time because more so just want to make this somewhat of a quick video to look at the results. So here's the really cool thing with this. So this is 645, which some people consider um, you know, not a worthwhile step up from 35 mil, but on this scanner, um, scanning at 4,000 DPI, this is giving us an 8,600 pixel wide image, which, uh, you know, this would, if we printed at it as is at this resolution, probably at like 240 DPI, this would be somewhere around a 30 inch wide print, which is pretty awesome. So anyways, let's go ahead and look at it. So that is two to one. Detail looks really nice. Uh, and then this is gonna be crazy, one-to-one. -one. Um, yeah, <laughs> looks looks really good. And again, I, I need to learn this process, learn how to sharpen these properly. I'm so used to sharpening Epson files where you go at it a lot. This is probably just set to, yeah, this is whatever Negative Lab Pro's uh, sharpening is. Um, but in terms of tonality and color, um, I'm just gonna fix this crop um, because it's bugging me a little bit something like that. Uh, the color and the ton tonality looks just amazing considering uh, I really didn't do anything at all other than convert this. Um, but yeah, the way that the scanner is handled, uh, you know, obviously this is a, a white wall with really, uh, this would have been really bright full sun on a white wall. And then we have, uh, you know, super dark shadows down here, which, uh, all I can really see is the grain. And, and even up here, uh, this is really encouraging because the one thing that I noticed a lot where the flatbed, at least the model I had, would really struggle is when the film started to get pretty dense. So if you had obviously areas like this where it's uh, you know a white wall, full sun, um, I would start to see a lot of kind of like color noise. Uh, whereas here it just looks really clean. Uh, even the sky, just seeing the grain, but uh, I can tell already though, I'm gonna have to learn how to get better with these um, film holders because you can see all this softness here. So obviously the film wasn't super flat. Um, but yeah, I mean, the rest of the image looks amazing. Super impressed. Here's a fun image. I actually don't know if I've ever scanned this one at home before. People are gonna hate on me for not wearing gloves right now, but I can't find mine. So this is some Portra 400. The last, uh, the one we just filmed was Fuji 400H, which looks nice. I would get rid of a bit of the blue, but uh, this is Pentax 672. And I'm just gonna leave these settings the same. because I was happy with how that last one looked. Hopefully this white balance thing doesn't mess too much up. And that actually looks pretty good as well. So I'm gonna leave that. Uh, we will change this to all soft. 
Wow, huh. So yeah, I mean, this looks great. And this is the third image now that I've converted one yesterday and two today using this raw DNG workflow and then Negative Lab Pro. And I mean, the colors straight out of conversion look amazing. And one of the things I always struggled with the most using Epson scan or even using view scan, sometimes it was just so hard to nail uh, and get the right colors, but this looks great. Um, in terms of detail, I mean, this is 100% uh, of a 10,500 pixel wide image and the detail looks amazing. And this is just using uh, whatever Negative Lab Pro's preset is for lab scanning. It looks like it's just a huge radius and a huge amount of sharpening, no detail. So I feel like as I you know, do some tests and fine tune sharpening of this, maybe bring them into Photoshop, uh, can make it even look quite a bit better. But you know, detail aside, uh, just the tonality is really, really nice. The colors, um, obviously this is an overcast day, but you know, just the, the shadow areas still look great. Um, you're seeing a little bit of the grain, which is nice. Um, but none of this color noise that I kind of noticed in the past with my uh, Epson flatbed. So, yeah. Wow. So last thing, really quick, I'm gonna scan some 35. I'll just show this process really, really fast because uh, no, again, I don't shoot a lot of 35, but that is one thing that interests me quite a bit uh, about this scanner, uh, because obviously 35 is quite a bit smaller than 6x7, and my flatbed would struggle with it. So let's load some of that up. Okay, not bad, but I feel like this is going to need a little bit of work. Um, it's looking a little warm, so we'll cool it down, and it's looking a little bright. Just because I have this image scanned already, uh, so I have the reference kind of in my head. Um, still a little bit, let's increase this a bit, still a little warm. Actually, that's not bad there. The color of the truck is really nice. Um, anyways, just for the sake of this video, not a negative lab pro video, but the cool scan. So that actually still looks pretty good. The color on the truck is really nice. I don't think we did any of that um, sharpening. I think last time it was like, set at like 90 or something like that. So yeah, I mean, wow. Considering I'm being really, uh, not doing anything with the sharpening, I'm just doing these presets or, you know, setting it to whatever right now. Um, that looks really, really, really good considering this is 35 mil and this is like a 5,500 pixel uh, image on the long edge. Uh, it looks great. I feel like with the proper sharpening workflow, this would just look even better. Color is great on the truck. I, I would do a little bit more work to this image, obviously, but um, yeah, wow. Really impressed, really, really, really impressed. Um, this by far has been the, I guess I wanna say the easiest uh, scanning that I've ever done at home. Um, any other time I just felt like I was kind of messing with things, always having to, um, you know, adjust a lot of different uh, things to try and get the color I want, uh, not being happy with the detail unless I was, you know, scanning six by seven and even still not 100% happy. So, um, yeah, initial impressions, probably haven't been this excited about a piece of equipment um, for film photography, probably ever. So I feel like now I can go and use this gear I have and I can... Uh, kind of finish the process at home, scanning on this machine and just getting really, really high quality results. So uh, yeah, really cool. Um, unfortunate, obviously, that these things are so hard to find and they are getting really expensive. Um, so I would love to see and, and hopefully help, um, you know, bring to life maybe a new option for a 120 scanner for people because it'd be cool if there was something like this available now with current technology that didn't cost so much money that you could just go and buy brand new um, because it feels like it, there's just so much, um, you know, so many loops to jump through scanning at home to try and get really good results. I know there is the, the DSLR scanning, which a lot of people are happy with as well. Obviously, I've never explored that route, but um, this is so simple and just has given me really, really nice results. So really excited about this. Um, that being said, uh, I got a lot to learn, a lot of work to do, just figuring out this workflow. Really want to dial in some sharpening um, uh, workflows with this scanner, but um, yeah, initial impressions, 
super excited. So keep an eye out. Hopefully in the next couple of weeks, I'll do um, a follow-up video to this, just showing my actual workflow for this once it's learned. Uh, and then maybe we'll do some comparison stuff with the Epson flatbed uh, just for fun to see how it is. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. A uh, little last minute, but really thought it'd be cool to share this initial process, unboxing this scanner and using it for the first time with you guys. And uh, yeah, hope you got some value from it. So until next time, thank you all for watching and See you soon.